everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the NBA slate for this evening. Uh, Bobby is out uh, for this early recording uh, due to technical difficulties, so I'm going to be doing this uh, on my own. And I'm also going to be probably handling the live stream a little bit later. Um, so because I'm doing it, I, I'd like to do things just a little bit differently. Rather than go game by game, I just want to kind of just get an overall slate view and then, you know, just more of a top-down approach kind of the way I feel more comfortable. So uh, hopefully you enjoy that. Hopefully it helps you. Um, so first of all, when I look at the slate, the first thing I do see is that there is a, a late night uh, island game at 10 o'clock, which is just kind of, I think it is kind of important to just get an idea of what the slate's going to look like from a timing perspective. Um, if In case there's a really good play in the late game, or if there is some re really important questionable tag in the late game. I think it's important to prepare for that in advance. And as you'll see, well, there is a very, you know, at least one really, really strong play uh, from that game, which we'll get to in a minute. Then you get Chicago, Washington, Milwaukee, Philly. looks like a good game overall. Detroit or Brooklyn could be, could be trouble for Detroit. And Lakers at Dallas. And the, the real important thing that's going to drive this slate is the fact that uh, – is that uh, LeBron James is not going to play. Manab is doubtful, which is code for he's not playing, which means that everybody from LA is going to get a bump. And you'd imagine that that's where the value is going to come from. So what I did was I ran projections and this is as of, you know, noon or whatever. So not even, it was even earlier. So it's even earlier than this. And I'm going to show you what they look like now. But again, you know, you're very, you'd be very, uh, you'd be smart to tune in live uh, when I do this about 5.45 or 6 a little later, um, where more has come in. But I do think it's important to get an idea of what's going on here. Um, so let me pull up uh, what I look at. And this is, this is kind of my sheets, which kind of rank everybody by what I call sheets value score. And it has an early look at the, at the projection, projected ownership as well. But again, this is all very, very loose, to say the least. But the one thing I'll notice is that Luca really stands kind of above everybody else at the top. Um, I have him a full 20, you know, value score points ahead of Embiid, which is, is quite a bit actually. So Luca, it looks like a strong priority. And then Giannis, who usually is extremely strong play uh, on this particular day, he's rating a little bit below those guys. And, uh, you know, not surprisingly, the ownership is kind of reflecting everything that I just said, but it is kind of important to see where we're, where we're going here. Then as far as spend ups, you see Harden, you know, a little bit below uh, Giannis and very similar ownership. The other thing I kind of see, and then we'll, we'll take another couple of looks at this, is that Rudy Gobert looks like an extremely strong play uh, at 7,300. And I alluded to that earlier, uh, the fact that he's in a late game. Um, so that gives him a little more bump. So, uh, Rudy Gobert looks like a very strong 7,300 play rate rated in this way. And then you get a couple of more mid range guys, DeRozan, Kristop and Porzingis. And then finishing that off, you have Durant and, and Donovan Mitchell. And you'll notice that Durant really just falls short to those other spend ups today. Um, and then you get Donovan Mitchell. Um, kind of rounding out what I consider kind of the top tier plays. You know, unfortunately, you can't play all those guys for salary constraints, but it's important to know which guys you're just kind of looking at. Next thing I like to do, and I will go back to the game by game in a minute, is is I want to rank these by by points per dollar. Now you'll you'll know that that there is usually uh, value that opens up a little later that will provide even better point per dollar projections. But it is important to see where we're looking at right now. And, and, and not surprisingly, at the top of the, of the list are these Lakers, you know, with, um, with uh, LeBron being out. And the three guys listed all look really fishy. I mean, if you want to know the truth, um, that being Stanley Johnson, Wenyan Gabriel, and Dwight Howard. I mean, they're, they're all like about 6X plus. Stanley Johnson is interesting because he's not really much of a usage guy in general, but I have seen him have some good games. So I don't know where I'm going to come off, uh, come out on somebody like that. Um, so as far as value goes, you get the three Lakers, you get 
Kleber, who almost always looks like a decent value play. And then a couple of more of these random five Xers, you know, like for five plus Xers, you get Killian Hayes always seems to show up, Sadoransky, Kispert, Andre Drummond, all these guys. And then you'll see the first guy that shows up in both lists is Rudy Gobert. Um, and so this is a very, very strong play. Kind of start your lineups with if you don't want to start with a big spend up. Rudy Gobert 7,300 is going to be a really, really good play, provided he plays. I mean, he still re regarded as questionable when he sat out the last game. Um, so we have to keep an eye on that. All right. So now what I like to do is I'll pull up the, um, the, uh, the NBA, uh, the DraftKings app, and I'll, I'll, sh I'll see exactly the games. You know, I, even, I didn't even care what the games were yet. So you have Chicago and Washington. And, and the first thing I noticed is who did I think about when I was looking at the, at the other rankings? Did I remember even getting to any of those guys? Well, I did recall a couple of Washington kind of cheapos. But did I get up to any of those Chicago's? Yeah. So I did get to some uh, DeRozan and Vooch as kind of strong plays. So what you might consider doing, again, this is what I think about in advance, is maybe maybe do some kind of stack with those cheapo Washingtons. But I don't know. It doesn't, I mean, it's not like those Washington guys had a lot of upside. They were just more just cheapo values like Kispert and, and, and who are the other guys Let's take a look at some of these other Washingtons that I, that I referred to. Sadoransky. I mean, these guys aren't going to blow the cover, you know, tear the cover off the ball or anything like that to the point where they're going to hang with the, the you know, with the ceiling games of, of the Chicago guys. So I think of anything in that Chicago game, I'll go back to those, um, to those uh, DeRozan, pretty cheap now, I guess at 8,300 or Vooch. But as I mentioned, Rudy Gobert is probably going to be a much stronger play at center. So Milwaukee Philly, I mean, it looks like a really good game, right? I mean, Giannis versus Embiid and, and Harden. So what I would recommend is if you are going to play Giannis, and Giannis again, he's I, I consider him a uh, the non preferred spend up. I prefer Luca to be the spend up here. But if you are going to play Giannis, maybe it's a good idea to pair him of you know kind of an over overspent one you know uh, mini stack with either Embiid or Harden, as opposed to playing Hart, you know, Giannis by himself. Um, and likewise, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna prioritize Embiid over Luca, for example, maybe you want to run that one back with Giannis. Um, now again, you're gonna need to have good value to make this work because you're gonna spend 20, you know, 23,000 on your first two guys in this mini stack. But you know, you, they could certainly go off. Um, anybody else in this Milwaukee Philly game that I may have missed? Um, I mean, not really. I mean, I don't see any of them listed in, in, into the value plays or anything like that. So really seems like a game you either want to pay for a really expensive stack, either Embiid or Harden with Giannis, or just probably avoid it. Uh, that, would be, that would be my, uh, that would be my uh, recommendation. All right, Detroit, Brooklyn. I, I don't recall getting to Brooklyn. Oh, because, right because that was with Duran. Let's see where, I, I presume that, that, um, that um, what's his name? That Kyrie is not gonna project all that great. He doesn't, even worse than, than, than Durant. I mean, I, think, I don't think I'm gonna get to the Brooklyn guys today and just kind of hope they take a little ownership. I don't think they will, but if you do wanna play something from this game, you know, you could do worse with these Detroit guys though, right? So, so you could, I, sh I should say, you could do worse than playing the Detroit guys. See, Cade Cunningham looks like he's just below the, that first group of plays, but he's only about 12% owned. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Bagley also just right below that group. I have him at 30% owned. So that, that's not, I'm not too interested in that, but Cade Cunningham, is a really, really strong play here. And then, as you might recall, there's another Detroit guy we mentioned who was at Killian Hayes. So if you want to play Killian Hayes and Kate Cunningham, for example, and you want to include Marvin Bagley, I mean, that's fine. You know, then maybe you could play a low-owned stack where those three Detroit guys running it back with either Durant or, um, or Kyrie and kind of make that work. Uh, all right, so Lakers-Dallas. Um, I think the one issue that you can have with playing uh, Luca 
over these other two, over, you know, Embiid, Harden, or Giannis, is the Lakers are probably going to be an extremely big underdog here without LeBron. Um, to the point where, you know, you can get one of those games where Luca only plays three quarters when the game gets out of, if and when the game gets out of hand. And can't, I don't know if you're going to be able to get away with, uh, with Luca only three quarters um, in this spot. I mean, not that the Lakers are, are good in defense or anything, but, it's, but, but Dallas plays kind of slow. So it's, it's if in three quarters, it doesn't, I don't believe Luca is going to get there. So that is quite a bit of a, you know, that I think that is a concern. Um, and the problem is, is not a lot of Lakers you can really play. I mean, they all look really off. I mean, they all look okay as far as plays go, like values go, but you just don't see a lot of upside in these guys. You know, Carmelo, maybe Stanley Johnson, Gabriel Howard. I mean, this is this is a really, I hate to say it, but this is a really, really weak team. Um, you could play Westbrook. I mean, that certainly makes a little bit of sense. Uh, he hasn't really been putting up much, but that's, I think, what you have to do, actually. I mean... You could you play somebody that like 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 Westbrook to because if, unless Westbrook has a good game, I don't think the game can stay close. Um, so maybe that's the idea. You play Luca alongside of Westbrook, and that certainly makes some sense to me. And if you want to take some shots at these other guys like Stanley Johnson and these other guys, to, you know, help booster up the stack a little bit, I think that's fine. The one thing I would say is that I wouldn't play Carmelo and Malik Monk together. You could pick one of the two, but I don't like playing the two of them together. And I wouldn't play Gabriel and Howard necessarily together either. Um, aside from that, again, I, I would try to, again, if you're going to play Luca, which is probably the best play, um, probably try to run that back with Westbrook. So, so that's, so that's kind of the theme here, right? Uh, play Luca, run it back with Westbrook or play Giannis and run it back with one of the Philadelphia guys. I think those are the two main ideas in the slate. And as I mentioned earlier, um, uh, Kleba raised to be a good value play on the Dallas side. All right, so I mentioned this a couple of times. <laughs> I mentioned this a couple of times, but Rudy Gobert, if he plays, is extraordinarily cheap at 7,300. So I would make sure to try to get some of that. Um, nothing else from this game really stood out, but let's just kind of take a look. Let's see if we look at it by on a team level. If anything kind of works, um, not really. Royce O'Neal always projects to be decent point per dollar, but he never does anything, and that's pretty much it. So I, I would I would make Gobert kind of kind of a priority across the board here if he plays, and then on the other side, I mean nothing, I mean nothing really. So, um, so I guess that'll be it. I mean, just to review, uh, I like Gobert. Um, as a good play today overall. Um, I like Luca, and if I play Luca, I think running it back with Westbrook might not be the worst idea in the world. Uh, on the Detroit Brooklyn game, I think you could mini stack this as well. You play Cade and Killian Hayes, you run that back with one of those, you know, uh, Brooklyn guys you wouldn't play otherwise, like uh, Harden, excuse me, um, Kyrie or Durant, Mill at Milwaukee, Philly. If you played the game, you probably want to have. Giannis with one of those two stunts from Philly. And I guess the Chicago Washington's game is going to fall by the wayside. Those Washington cheapos, you know, you might get to them sort of. So I guess that's not bad. And uh, the Chicago one, the Chicago guys, DeRozan and, um, and Vooch, I think are fine. I think Vooch, the problem with Vooch is that just Gobert is just so much of a better play. That's about it. Okay. Um, do I want to look at FanDuel real quick? Yeah, let's see. Let's see if FanDuel, let's, let's see if anything stands out as a, being a big difference on FanDuel. How about that? Um, Luca and B, Giannis, same thing. DeRozan looks to be a stronger play over here, I suppose. Um, so DeRozan, I would give a bump. And what else? Uh, you could play DeSomnu over here, 3,600 on FanDuel. Everything else is pretty much the same. A little bit more of a bump for Sadiq Bay for Detroit. If you want to use that stack over there. All right, uh, that will do it. I will see you guys live at six, where hopefully we'll have some more clarity on everything.
and uh, that'll do it.